Well, God bless you. Listen, I'm so delighted again to be able to just share just a word with you. I'm so excited about what is getting ready to take place on these grounds here at the Salem Church. Uh, our conference that will take place, new anointing conference that will take place July the 4th through the 7th. That's right, the 4th through the 7th, and it is power packed from beginning to end. Listen, I'm telling you in advance so you can make provision, make your flight arrangement, your hotel accommodations, and all those things because you want to be here for this wonderful, exciting event that will take place here at this wonderful conference. This is our 13th year of this conference. Listen, we're starting off with a bang on the 4th of July. Bishop Al Green, do you believe it? Bishop Al Green will be here along with uh, Pastor Donald Parson. That's enough within itself. You, you need to make reservations to be here. Tuesday night, Pastor Billy Bell will be here. My goodness, just Dr. Bell alone. And then Dr. Maurice Watson will be here on Tuesday night. Wednesday, Pastor Jamal Bryant will be here. Wow. And then Thursday, we're celebrating a living legend in our city, Dr. J.L. Payne. He is the godfather of the pastors and preachers in our city. We love him so much here in the city of Memphis. He has meant so much to the body of Christ, to the people of God. And we want to show him some love on that Thursday. Uh, our, our living luncheon will be Thursday. Uh, John Howard Wesley uh, will be here on Thursday night to preach in our gospel explosion. H.B. Charles will be here to preach in that explosion. And then John Terrius Tate, uh, one of the sons in the city, will be here to preach on that Thursday night. Of course, during the day, we have just a wonderful preacher, the one that had been here, John Adolph, will be back again by popular demand and preach every day in our noon service. And then all of our classes, all of our lecturers that will take place during the course of the week, you got to be here. You need to make provision right now to come. You can register online right now if you like. Just go to godisgoodministry.net and register. Of course, you can call our church office at 1-800-375-4007. Plan to be here. Listen, they might just get a discount if you come in groups. Call our office and we'll give you the details. Have a wonderful day. You be blessed. Well, God bless you. Listen, I am so honored and delighted that you chose to turn this way. My goodness, God is such a wonderful, such a marvelous Savior, has done so many marvelous things. Listen, I'm a person that's in love with the Word of God. I thank God for the Word. The Word is inspiration, aspiration, give us new observation, help us look with new calculations. And listen, God can do so many marvelous things when we spend time in the Word of God. I want to share with you a message that I preach that I stayed with the Word. And I thank God for the Word, for it is the Word that changes us. It is the Word that makes us better. It is the Word that helps develop and grow us. I want you to hear this message. I think it will be a blessing for you. Let's listen. That there's some of you that's sick and tired of being sick and tired of being sick and tired. Because every time you turn around, if it's not one thing, it's something else. And you have discovered, and if you have not, if you live long enough, you will sooner or later discover your limitations. Because many times the people you thought you could depend on would be in the enemy's camp. Instead of trying to help you, they will be joining with the other side. And sometimes your own family members that you thought you could depend on, they'll be over there with them. And you will discover that you will have to deal with some things all by yourself. And you'll find yourself positioned in God's waiting room. And whenever you get in God's waiting room, it's a tough place to be because you don't ever know what's going to happen next. 
You don't know if it's going to be good news today or it's going to be six years or 10 years or 20 years because you can't measure God by your timetable. Because God moves whenever God get ready to move. It is not on your time, but it is on his time. Do I have a witness? There's what you call a prolonged season of trials. In other words, some people have short seasons of trouble. It just happened and last a few days. The others that have it, it lasts weeks. But the others sometimes go through it year after year, after year, after year. And you ask yourself, how long? How long would I have to encounter what I'm encountering now? Will there ever be sunlight at the end of the tunnel? <laughs> Because if you're like I am, sometimes you get sick and tired of the stuff you have to encounter. Talk to me, somebody. You can tell that there were some questions asked. You can write it down if you want. I'll back up and go back through it. These are several questions he was asking. Why this punishment? Because sometimes the things you go through, it look like you're being punished. When you look at your resume, you discover you hadn't been that bad. <laughs> Talk to me somebody. You might have made some mistakes because Romans 3.23 says for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. You, you understand that, but look like what you're going through, nobody else is going through it but you. You look at your brothers, don't look like they're going through it. And you look at your friends, don't look like they're going through it. And you know that you're doing your best that you can do for God. And you ask yourself, where, why is the punishment? And then you've been praying the same prayer so long. You ask, where is his presence? With all the stuff I'm going through, where is God? Look like I need to pull this by myself. But then you look at it, not only do you ask, why the punishment? Where is his presence? Then you start asking, what is the purpose? Why, why me? What are you getting God out of this? Out of the stuff, losing one job, have to get another job. Lord, what are you getting out of all the sickness you place in, in my life? Or what are you getting out of this? The things that you're making me go through. What is it that you're getting out of this? And then where is your power? Because we've been bragging about God as a God of power. And we know you can destroy the enemy whenever you get ready. I saw him. And all of us can attest to the fact that we know eventually our enemies will be cut down. We already know that. And let me tell you why we know it. Psalms 37. It says in verse 1, Fret not thyself. Because of evildoers. Neither be thou envy against the workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down and withered like the grass. That's the word of God. We know they're going to be taken out. But the question is when? <laughs> Lord, when are you going to take them out? When are you going to get them? When are you going to get them off my back? We, we've already read in the passage in Psalms 27 that we have bragged about the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. 
of whom shall I be afraid? When my enemy, the wicked, come up against me, to heat up my flesh, they stumble and fail. Is that in your Bible? He says in verse 3 of Psalms 27, Though a host shall encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. The war shall rile against me. Even in this will I be confident. David, he talks about all the stuff that he already knows. But when you get to the point of memory and imagination, the press sometimes set in. You say, now I've been preaching this, but don't look like it's working for me. <laughs> I, I've been sharing it with others, but Lord, why? Why is it that I'm positioned in this waiting room? Y'all don't like me here. I, I have some serious problems. I'm like David. Now watch what he says in the text. You could tell he was getting a little impatient. Because in verse 1 he says, how long do I have a witness? He says it several times, how long will you forget me? How long would you hide your face from me? Verse 2, how long shall I take counsel in my soul? How long shall my enemies be exalted above me. He said, I have some serious questions. Is there anybody in the house this morning got questions about stuff you've had to encounter? You know you didn't do nothing to deserve it. And yet there are questions you have and you ain't got no answer yet. Well, God bless you. Listen again, we'll be right back in just a moment to share with you the conclusion of this message. Have you stopped just for a moment to think of how good God is to you, what God has done for you, where God brought you from, where God wants to carry you to? Are you conscious and aware of the fact that you're not just a person that exists, that God had you in mind before the foundation of the world? that God had called you, had sanctified you. I'm talking about you, you that's listening and viewing this telecast now. God brought you here for a purpose. Ephesians 1 and 4 says, according to whom he has chosen, is an tense that made God acted alone without a Supreme Court, without a board of directors. But it's not only an tense, but in middle voice, which means he acted, he called by himself, but for himself. You've been called by God, for God, and because of God. You are here for a purpose. And God wants you to live that purpose, relive that purpose, do the things that will be pleasing in His sight. I want to go back to this message and let's listen to the conclusion of this matter. Let's listen. Can I tell you, you're not by yourself. Here is a man that has encountered all of these things. He's a sweet singer of Israel and yet David got some questions. Do we have a witness? He has some unusual questions. Can I walk through them and I'll let y'all go? The first question he asks, he said, I'm experiencing forgotness. Wait a minute. Have you ever been forgotten? I know mothers feel bad when your children forget you. When they forget your birthday. <laughs> when your husband forget your anniversary. When your grandchildren forget to tell you thank you. Anybody here been forgotten? 
by people that was near and dear to you? Well, that's bad enough. But when you have been forgotten by God, preach Reverend Ray. He says, listen, God, I'm out here working for you. I'm doing all I can for the cause of Christ. Maybe I need to read it again. Y'all looking at me straight. How long will thou forget me? That means that he don't even hear David. And is showing in his presence. Ain't that something? God do some strange things. That's why sometimes when you're going through things, you have to learn how to talk to yourself. <laughs> sometimes when you can't talk to God, you have to talk to you. David said, I, when I can't reach him, I can just think myself happy. Because I know somewhere out there, God is there. He's just not responding to me now. But you got to be shown up depressed when you believe you're forgotten by God. Because he loaded the Bible with scriptures. Listen in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8. Say, we have trouble. On every side, yet not in distress. That means trouble will come. But God has not forsaken us yet. But when your mind say you can't reach it, it's hard for anybody else to convince you. David, talk to me if you can. David says, I'm experiencing being forgotten by God. He like he's clear on this. He said, I know you've forgotten me. But he said, how long? How long? Let me see if I can bring it home. He comes to church and can't feel nothing. Everybody's shouting around him. But he can't get his shout on. <laughs> Everybody else read the scripture, get an understanding. But when he read it, things ain't ticking like they should be. He said, God is not giving me the right understanding now. He ain't saying nothing. And sometimes God will be silent on you. Do I have a witness? Elijah went looking for God one day. He looked for him in a storm and couldn't find him. He looked for him in a hurricane and couldn't find him. But he found God in a still, small voice. Sometimes it's too much noise to recognize him. Sometimes the highway is too busy for you to recognize it. Sometimes you can't find him until you get somewhere and get still. When the family has gone to bed and gone to sleep, God will reveal himself. Sometimes in merely quietness. Am I here by myself? He said, listen, you have I'm experienced being forgotten by God. Not only have I experienced being forgotten, but he has excluded his face from me. That means if I can't see his face, I can't recognize his presence. <laughs> Anybody know you need to see the Lord's face? 
Sometimes the reason we can't see his face is because of us. You know when, when the goldsmith get ready to bring his gold out of the ground, he digs it and he put it in a container and put fire under it. And he turned the fire up. And then once in a while, he'll look over in the pot and see if he can see the reflection of his face. If he cannot see his face, he turned the fire up a little harder. He look in and see if he can see his face. If he can't see it, he turned the fire up a little harder. And then he look in, his, in the pot and when he see the reflection of his face in the pot, he know the goal is pure. Sometime in our own experiences, God will put a little fire on us. Preach Reverend Ray. And when he can't see his reflection in our lives, he'll turn the fire up a little hotter. And when he still can't see us, he turned the fire up a little hotter. And before long, you don't hear me. You'll be able to see the God you're looking for. Because most of us, we're where we are. It's because we've been in the fire. You're not here just to show up on Sunday morning. Most time, you're here because you had some fire experiences. You've had some things that happened in your own personal life. You know if it had not been for the Lord, you would have lost your mind a long time ago. Hmm. Do I have a witness? Not only the experience of being forgotten, the exclusiveness from God's face, the executing of his plan. Because watch what he says in the text. He says, how long shall I take counsel in my own soul? Well, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. I hope you enjoyed this message as well as I did preaching. There are some sermons that I just enjoy preaching. And this is one of those messages that I enjoyed, that the Lord allowed me to share this message, and I thank God for it. I want you to have a copy of this message. This is another keepsake. I want you to have this message. You can get it not just for yourself, but you have some friends that need to hear this. Get it, send it to them. Let it be a blessing for them. They will cherish the sermon. They will cherish you and appreciate you for putting this in their hands. Get this message. You can call 1-800-375-4007 or write to God is Good Ministry, uh, 2237 South Parkway, East Memphis, Tennessee, zip 3811. Four, or go to godisgoodministry.net and we will be sure to get this message right back to you. It's a keepsake. You want to have this message to share with your friends, your family, your well wishers. And then I love for you, if you think well ever to partner with the Salem, the God is Good Ministry, I want you to be a partner with us. Help us share the gospel, spread it across the nation, across the globe. If it has blessed you, I think it will bless somebody else. You can share with us by sending whatever donation you would love to send, five, 10, 20, $100, $1,000, whatever you led to do, don't procrastinate. Don't say I'm gonna do it tomorrow because tomorrow never comes. Sit down right now, write a check out right now and send it to God is good ministry. You say, I hear people across the globe, across the nation, so they enjoy the telecast, enjoy hearing it. Well, it's not free. It costs something to go into the airways to share the gospel. You can help get it where it needs to go. Do that for us right now. Thank you so much. And remember this, God is good. You got it all the time. Well, God bless you. Listen, I'm so delighted again to be able to just share just a word with you. 
I'm so excited about what is getting ready to take place on these grounds here at the Salem Church. Uh, our conference that will take place, new anointing conference that will take place July the 4th through the 7th. That's right, the 4th through the 7th, and it is power packed from beginning to end. Listen, I'm telling you in advance so you can make provisions, make your flight arrangement, your hotel accommodations, and all those things because you want to be here for this wonderful, exciting event that will take place here at this wonderful conference. This is our 13th year of this conference. Listen, we're starting off with a bang on the 4th of July. Bishop Al Green, do you believe it? Bishop Al Green will be here along with uh, Pastor Donald Parson. That's enough within itself. You, you need to make reservations to be here. Tuesday night, Pastor Billy Bell will be here. My goodness, just Dr. Bell alone. And then Dr. Maurice Watson will be here on Tuesday night. Wednesday, Pastor Jamal Bryant will be here. Wow. And then Thursday, we're celebrating a living legend in our city, Dr. J.L. Payne. He is the godfather of the pastors and preachers in our city. We love him so much here in the city of Memphis. He has meant so much to the body of Christ, to the people of God. And we want to show him some love on that Thursday. Uh, our, our living luncheon will be Thursday. Uh, John Howard Wesley uh, will be here on Thursday night to preach in our gospel explosion. H.B. Charles will be here to preach in that explosion. And then John Terrius Tate, uh, one of the sons in the city, will be here to preach on that Thursday night. Of course, during the day, we have just a wonderful preacher, the one that had been here, John Adolph, will be back again by popular demand and preach every day in our noon service. And then all of our classes, all of our lecturers that will take place during the course of the week, you got to be here. You need to make provision right now to come. You can register online right now if you like. Just go to godisgoodministry.net and register. Of course, you can call our church office at 1-800-375-4007. Plan to be here. Listen, they might just get a discount if you come in groups. Call our office and we'll give you the details. Have a wonderful day. You be blessed.